It was time to hit the road Leaving the house that the baby built we are live. Thank you. You want to open us up? 162 you, experience? It can't be live. It's the internet. Are we, are we live? Well, we're live right now. Watch this. Bam. <laughs> we are live. We're dead out of the poker tournament, though. I'm with uh, comedian Mark Price, and we uh, both just participated in a celebrity poker tournament. No, here. I want to get this straight. Are we live? We're, we're alive right now. No way. Yeah, nobody. You're pretty bad. This is live? No, like, no, okay. Nobody. Pretty bad. They're not watching live, but this is live. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So no, live. we did go live for many episodes, Mark. You must know on Facebook, and it worked out well. But uh, so but now I, you're just now you're just blatantly lying about it. This yeah. is the Donald Trump podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really ever consider that, but we'll go back and uh, we'll consider uh, our introduction. Anyway, we're not live here on the one six two. Almost live. We're almost, we're almost live. live here, and uh, first time, uh, not first time playing poker, but uh, first time in a while. You were in a poker tournament. How'd you feel like you did today? The- I hung in there. I hung in there uh, more time than the guy who taught me how to play today, so I felt good about that. That was your friend. My friend. He taught me how. I stayed in longer than him. And there were what about eight some, celebrities here today? I had some big. Uh, yeah, I think I came in about fourth of the celebrities. There were four more left. For you guys, it was more of beating the other celebrities. I don't know. It was just about having fun, really. But I. I did find myself with a couple of hands with thousands of dollars and chips on the table. <laughs> Pretty cool. It's a little disorienting because, like, that $5,000 chip, you think it's, you know, when it's really only about eight bucks. Is that true? Yeah. Um, well, good stuff. So, I'm you've, not been very in, good at math, so. you've been in show business since you're seven years old? Even younger, really. When I was really? born, I was born into the show business. My mom was a singer. Okay. My dad was a comedian. And they used to bring me on stage at the end of the show. I was like really? a little. Uh, Offering up to the audience for applause. <laughs> it was a cheap device for applause. Wow. And do you ever remember your seeing your dad do stand up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the, you know, everything for me. That's how I kind of started uh, and studying the business, if you will. And it was the greats, the old timers, like Milton Berle and George Burns and Joey Bishop, all those guys. I got to hang out with them and watch wow. their shows and get, you know, premiere access, you know, backstage and in the limo and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's pretty hot. Yeah. And then you were about seven years old, and you got your first, at least, primetime gig on One Day at a Time? Not exactly. I was a little older by then. I, okay. I was seven when I was doing the Joy Bishop thing. Oh, okay. By the time I moved to California, I was more like 13 when that happened. Interesting. 12, you, 13. Do you remember that show at all? Which one? The One Day at a Time. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Schneider. Uh, Schneider's tra- camper. Schneider. People don't know, but Schneider lived in a camper in the parking lot. In real life. No, I guess he had an apartment, but he also had a camper. <laughs> I don't know. Something like, in our, the show. In our, yeah, in our episode, we, yeah. we were messing around in Schneider's camper, and we burned the building down. Wow. We were smoking cigarettes. Huh. And then I, I saw you were also on an Archie Bunker episode. I would just happened. I finally got TV for the first time in years last night at my new place, and I put on an old Archie Bunker episode. And then I saw you were so everything was... And that, I think that was my first ever acting gig, I think. Really? Yeah. Do you remember the scene at all? With Archie in the living room, with the couch. I remember that. I remember the chair, Archie's chair. <laughs> you know, He's like the modern-day Donald Trump now, right? Just with uh, his uh, old-time Alex P. Heaton. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. It's interesting because in Archie Bunker's case, people love to hate Archie Bunker, of course. Okay, But in Alex P. Keaton's case, the character from the TV show I was on, Family Ties... Michael J. Fox was just so darn lovable. Yeah. Arguably more lovable than even Carol O'Connor as Archie Bunker, certainly. Certainly. And so people didn't love to hate him. They loved to love him, even though he was like this hateable character in some ways. But he was lovable. It was... It, I think it started this whole Republican boom. <laughs> and uh, this whole... Uh, and now you've been uh, doing stand-up since you Hardcore your conservative greed movement. Yeah, well, it's certainly... The uh, Family Test Show had something to do with that. And the irony is that the writers of the show were very liberal, and they wrote it like a Archie Bunker. They thought people would mock and laugh at that, but it just didn't work out that way. Wow. People just sort of cherished it and bowed down to it instead. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. And do you still keep in touch with those guys? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, everybody kind of gets together. We, we had a group gathering not too long ago. That was fun. Everybody got together again. We're... We've had some, you know, some tough uh, medical realities in our our group. You know, sure. Michael J. Fox, of course, being the most visible in his medical circumstances, and he's doing. Uh, you know, people ask me, like, "How's he doing?" How's my yeah. doing? He's doing as well as anybody can under those circumstances. It's a 
very difficult situation. But he does as good as anybody can. He's a great family man. He's got a beautiful family. And uh, our executive producer, who was very much the father of our show and the guy that everybody looked up to, and he was like, you know, he ran it. And he, he's no longer with us. He, he passed a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, really at a crazy early age for someone. And uh, so we miss him terribly. I understand there may be a theatrical version of Family Ties really? in the works right now. The people who did Wicked are working on it. Something we don't know if it's been authorized by powers that be properly or not, but apparently there's something in the works. Interesting. You think the uh, character Skippy will make it? I, uh, you, <laughs> you, never you never know. It's kind of funny to think they'll be casting a young me somewhere. <laughs> Maybe you'll play yourself. That would be fun. Maybe in an older version. Maybe the, the neighbor will be a little bit older in this one. A stand-up comic. <laughs> That would be pretty funny. So, um, you remember the first time you took a stage doing stand-up? You were like 10? I actually, I, I actually, by the way, I heard about the Stanley Ties play thing, and I was in touch with the, the the estate, if you will, of the creator of Family Ties, his wife, you know, his wife, the executive producer's wife, you know, and I said, did you know that the, there's a play? And she went, no, I didn't know about the play. And I thought, oh, what did I do? I started the whole thing. There's <laughs> a, a lawyer that had to stay night at Paramount, but late at Paramount that night, you know. So, oh, that's funny. What? And then they bring up my name. Skippy. <laughs> what the He'll never work again again. <laughs> That's my line. He'll never work again again. <laughs> now, your line on Facebook is that uh, you've never worked a day of your life. Hmm. Well, that's more kind of the, goes with the famous saying that if you do something you love, sure. you never work a day in your life. Yeah. I work pretty hard. I, this last couple of weeks, I've worked maybe harder than I've ever worked in my life. Uh, so it's not like I don't work hard, but I, I guess what that means, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy making people laugh, and ultimately that's the goal, and all the efforts I put forth in my world sort of ultimately lead towards that. Sure. No, I get that. And uh, I've had the pleasure to uh, do, some, do stand-up with you out in North Carolina. We talked about that. A little bit earlier. Um, how many nights of, of uh, how many weekends uh, a year would you say you're on the road? There's no day? rule. I think it was 40 cities last year. A, a year doesn't even start. At the, it's like a school year kind of thing. It goes from like fall to spring. And we're just starting now. We go. Um, we're here at the Harris in San Diego, and this is sort of the opening of the whole tour because I'm off to uh, Buffalo and Rochester and Northern California and Florida and Minneapolis and Colorado and That's all sweet. in the next month. And is there a theme for the tour? The Make America Laugh Again Tour. <laughs> and I'm going to be in Florida during the election. So if they do it wrong, oh, man, I'm going to be right there. If they do it right, I'm going to be celebrating. If they do it wrong, I don't know what I'm going to do. That's pretty funny. And um, do you come up, like, you have, like, a whole new um, set list for this? Or do you bring back some of your old stuff that you know works? Like, how do you work? Maybe there's a bit of the old stuff that we're mm -hmm. in the mix. You know, I do an hour show, so I might have hit on some of the <laughs> yeah. material in the past years. It's possible. But uh, a lot of new stuff I've been working yeah. I've been working hard. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And do you still uh, work with Julie McCullough, who you were on the road with when you came No. Out? She didn't talk to me. Oh, okay. So okay. Like, no, no, no. You can bring her up. It's fine. She's, <laughs> she was a Playboy Playmate. You're right. And uh, she's a comedian. She's very beautiful. And um, she's... <laughs> Uh, and I went on a, a uh, what was it, the Beauty and the Dweeb tour. Yeah. I've toured with a lot of good people. I, I toured with Maureen Pryor, Richard Pryor's daughter. Nice. And um, comedy royalty, I like to say. Uh -huh. And uh, she's fantastic talent. She sings. She's funny. I've been touring more recently with Marsha Warfield, who's really like a god to me uh, as far as comedians go. She's one of the best. And she, she worked with Richard Pryor. But... Um, you know, she was just a part of the comedy scene dating back to the 70s, and she was one of the first headliners, and one of the first black headliners, and one of the first black female headliners, one of the first female headliners. She broke down a lot of barriers, and uh, it's really a thrill working with her. I just did a show with Billy Gardell, who plays Mike and Mike and Molly, mm -hmm. and that was fun. There's kind of a... A legends of sitcom tour that I'm on and it, I don't think I'm really a legend but the guys that I'm working with are like Jimmy Walker who played JJ on Good Times sure. he's a legend yeah, he's a legend so hey, you're I, on the tour I'm, you must be a legend I'm legend to Jason very humble I'm, I'm your legend pseudo legend <laughs> now you're up I refer to myself as a pseudo liberty is that hard to be um, yeah. are you you feel like you're typecast on the on the road as a sitcom person, you have to try extra hard to be funny? Or? No, I don't think that's hard at all. I think, in fact, if anybody even knows me from the sitcom, I'm just lucky. 
and uh, I don't complain about it at all. <laughs> and do you do you mind when people yell out to you, hey, Skippy, in the middle of a crowd? I've grown to cope. <laughs> There's somebody doing it right now. Skippy! <laughs> and uh, we are, we're at actually the pool. I don't think security knows we're here. we got about 10 more minutes. Um, no, oh, this is pretty low-key. i got to be honest with you. This, <laughs> nobody knows what the hell's going on. Yeah. The people think we're just having a loud conversation. Yeah. These guys are really That is just pretty cool. And um, as you know, we talked a little bit earlier, that, you know, this is a show um, about inspiring people, about empowering people. If you were talking to someone that wanted to uh, break into show business, whether it be an actor or whether it be stand-up, you might give two different pieces of advice. But, you know, what do you, what do you say to somebody early in their career? Well, first, let's empower and inspire people to come to the Harris in San Diego that's taken such good care of us. We had a great yes. time today. We both played in this celebrity poker tournament for... Uh, breast cancer and for the cancer society i guess they raised some money and so it was for a good cause and everyone here the staff i think everyone agrees is as good as it gets they don't have better service anywhere no shite yeah no we were talking about it. that yeah. and not in just this location but in every hour is that they're very good they're very good. seems like they're very friendly i i do work for them so i am biased i will admit it i didn't know that this advertisement is paid for <laughs> By Skippy works at Harris, so he likes them very much. No, but they they're really, the service is world class. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, yeah. okay, next question. I just wanted to take a moment with a little commercial. Well, sure. You know, when we first saw each other in the uh, in the poker room today, you were like, so your show's about empowering people, which is cool, which is, and, and it really is. I mean, you know, I do comedy too, so I try to make it funny and, and entertaining, but at the, bottom, at the end of the day, it's to inspire people to live their dreams. Do you feel like you're living your dreams doing stand-up? No doubt. No, yeah, show business is a uh, dream living situation. We just talked about it. I mean, it never worked a day in your life. I mean, like, sure, isn't that everybody's dream? Stand up is um, is not an easy uh, way to keep going. I mean, it's like you know. I mean, is there is there something at the end of the rainbow that you're looking for? I don't. I haven't figured that part out. Yet. You're right. <laughs> it's not an easy way to keep going. Uh, the old timers, and I've seen the old timers. We talked about them. You know, yeah. George Burns, Joey Bishop, sure. all those guys. They keep going until they can't go anymore. That's. Yeah probably on my horizon but you never know i'm yeah. looking for a way out and do you uh you produce a lot of stuff maybe i'll win poker maybe i'll get to become one of those poker guys you know who did that gabe kaplan welcome yeah. back cotter oh, for God. the old people watching <laughs> uh he, gabe kaplan mr cotter is a poker like fiend that's he's, how he makes his money now I swear he's a professional gambler he's really good fun. now a guy like that you think he makes money on residuals like he's still got money coming in I don't know I don't know in those days the residual deals weren't as good as they uh, I don't know I, I don't even know as, I was about to say as good as they are now I don't even know if they're as good now to be honest with you um, there was a period of time where it was better and then I think it got worse I, and do they still play family ties on TV they do. Yeah. They do. And uh, I'm grateful anytime I get a check from anything I did, you know, 30 years ago. Can't complain about that. Sure. <laughs> sure. You remember the very first... Some uh, people do. They're like, this check isn't big enough. I'm like, <laughs> it's from 30 years ago. I mean, really? You get a check from something you did 30 years ago? Do you? Right. Be great. No, that's the American dream, residual income. Yeah. Right? Yeah. For sure. Money uh, while you sleep. We call it in uh, showbiz mailbox money. Mailbox money. Absolutely. I love it. And it's like a game show, too, because you open the mailbox and it's, uh, there's some check there from Screen Actors Guild, <laughs> and you're like, how much is it? How much is it? $4.16. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, $68! Let's go to dinner! <laughs> That's fun. Um, cool. What's next for you, your career? Hmm. Good question. This tour is directly on my horizon. I literally leave this week, and um, so I'm thinking a lot about that, but I made a movie for the first time in 20 years, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It's called Wigged Out. Wigged Out. Tremendous cast, great crew, independent film, made in Indiana, and I had such a good time, and it was a kids' movie. The kids are the stars. I'm just a small part in it, but I worked with the kids, and it was fun. So I think, you know, you never know. Maybe I'll um, find myself acting again. I just kind of uh, started looking into the possibilities of... Uh, Reemerging on the Disney Channel as the dad or something like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Am I old enough to be the dad now? <laughs> I'm too old to be the dad. And how does that work? You call That's up your scary. agent. That's and, scary. And you say, I want to. Um, my I'm agent. Open. My agent. agent. I used to have an agent. <laughs> Jay Leno's agent. I, I used to be with Jay Leno's agent. Wow. And then I was with Screech's agent. And now. <laughs> Flo from Progressive. <laughs> She's my agent. <laughs> She's got me covered up. Yeah, I yeah. That's fun. <laughs> Liability, <laughs> uh, 
Stand up comedy. Stand up comedy. First, first joke you ever uh, told, do you remember? No, but honestly, just to just to answer the question <laughs> honestly, I recently just hooked up with a manager that handles okay. people, not unlike myself, people who maybe were known and now are trying sure. to reemerge and stuff. And so she's kind of looking out and scoping things, so you never know. It might go in and visit with my friends at the Disney Channel or something and see if there's a part. And uh, you do corporate gigs at all? Not really. No. I have. I've done yeah. them. I yeah. don't know. I don't know. I'm not the corporate comedian type. I don't know. Sure, sure. I remember doing one once for uh, one of the big drug companies, and it didn't go well. Because <laughs> I made like a Prozac joke in my opening line, and they were a different company or something. They hated me. <laughs> That's funny. Wrong drug. Sorry. <laughs> there goes your corporate career. Um, coming up in a... In they pay a, well, right? The corporate gigs. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. they used to anyway. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. You know, and I mean... It, Everything's relative, but Did, for sure. Get some of that uh, golden parachute money. Well, there's not as much as it seems like there used to be. You know, going around. Growing up in a uh, showbiz family, how much of an impact do you think that had on becoming who you are today and really never working? I mean, you've never had a regular job, right? I've never had a regular job. I'm going to try to think about it. Never waited tables? I mean, when I was a kid, I'd go to my stepmom's store and sweep and help sell and stuff like that. She had a pillow uh, comforter store. Okay. Uh, decorative pillows. Sure. Yeah. And um, she was before her time. <laughs> she was out of her time. Yeah, they're, they're huge now. Well, no, not her kind of stuff. I mean, her store got eaten up by like Bed Bath and Beyond yeah. and that kind of thing, right? Yeah, she yeah, was yeah. an independent. Yeah. Sure. But uh, but anyway, it was so that was a. Uh, uh, yeah, that was about it. I mean, a few things like that. Like, there was a girl that cut hair that was real pretty. I used to go sweep the floor in her hair. I guess I was a professional sweeper. <laughs> Which is ironically where I'm going to end up in retirement. So, it's perfect. I've got my skill set. It's the only other skill set I have. Comedy and sweeping. Well, I think you're going to do fine. There's a lot of places that need to be swept. <laughs> and, you know, maybe I'll find a witch or <laughs> so what uh